Mention President Biden. He might. He it looks like the candidate in, in 2024. When you were uh, a name speaker, a lot of people said, "Oh, Trump ally, Trump uh, big Trump guy, big Trump ally." But uh, you, you, as far as I know, you have not endorsed the former president yet uh, for 2024. And this is everybody's watching this show right now. This, if you're going to do that, this would be a great, great time to do it, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. You ready? I, ha I have done it. it yeah, I, I have. I have endorsed him wholeheartedly. Um, look, I was uh, one of the closest allies that President Trump had in Congress. He had a phenomenal first term. Those first two years, as you all know, we brought about the greatest economic numbers in the history of the world, not just the country, because his policies worked. And I'm, I'm all in for President Trump. I, okay, yeah, I know, good. I right. expect he'll be our nominee. Yeah. And, and he's going to win it. And we have to make Biden a one-term president. We have to do that. Speaker, I have, I have so many questions, but, but coming off of the, the back of that, just speak to it, because I, I think that there's a lot of Americans who look at the former vice pre, uh, former president rather, as uh, fundamentally divisive uh, to the country. They look at January 6th and the like, and they, they think to themselves, even if you, you like the policies that, that, that came about, what it ultimately did to the country, questions about democracy. Uh, there was a story over the weekend in the New York Times talking about how he planned to approach immigration. I know there's a lot of folks who, who want uh, to be uh, harder on immigration, no question, but some real questions about how he thinks about that. Um, some of the things that have come out in the last couple of days about January 6th and his in, 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 intent to stay in that position, irrespective uh, of, of what the actual uh, public and citizens were voting for and how you think about all those things. Listen, I, I think when we're voting for president, it can't be about personalities. It's got to be about policies and principles. And if you want liberty, opportunity, and security for, for more people in the country, you contrast the two policies and, and the principles of, of Trump and Biden. It's not even close. Under President Trump, we had a thriving economy. We had didn't have all these skirmishes around the world. We had relative peace because he projected peace through strength. We have exactly the opposite of all those things in President Biden. So I think you set aside those things and you look at what's best for your family. You look at what is best for your security, your safety, your, the economy, your pocketbook, all of these things. We have to make radical changes because the American people are hurting. Hardworking families are struggling. We can't handle inflation. We can't handle these things. And these are the results of the policies of, of, of the well, Biden Mr. White Speaker, House. And I think that's clear to most people. If then you, I, I read the same piece Andrew's re referring to. Uh, if he truly believed at that point of his presidency that, that it had been stolen and, and that there was too much fraud, uh, then I could see why, why someone would say, I'm not leaving, I'm staying here. But is that what you assume? Because if he did know that he lost the election and was trying to stay, then that, that's a dangerous precedent to, to return someone to office that wasn't going to leave office even if he knew for a fact that he had lost. So I guess you're, you would argue that he, that he really believed at that point, and maybe he still believes that he won the election. Well, he says, he, he say, he says it every, every, every which to. way. I, I take him at his word. I do believe that he believes okay. that. Remember, I was one of his lawyers. I worked on the impeachment defense team twice in the House uh, to, to defend his positions. And, right. and I know how he thinks. And he's convinced that because of all the irregularities and everything else, that he was still entitled to that. I, I haven't read the piece that you guys are referring to because I've been a little busy the last couple of uh, days. <laughs> Speaker, uh, but, you just but, said but, something But I will tell you, yeah. Which is you yeah. said you take him at his word. Would you, would you agree yeah. with the idea that the, I think there's a lot of Americans that look at certain things that, that he has said during his presidency, before his presidency, now, uh, that, that are fundamentally uh, not accurate? And I, I say that politely, meaning that, that, I mean, there have been things that he has said where right now, by the way, it's sunny outside, but it's like he's saying it's raining. And I think for a lot of Americans, they look at that and they say, that's very hard to trust. Well, listen, uh, there are a lot of people in Washington who say things that are not accurate all the time. Everybody does. We're all human. But I'll say this about President Trump with regard to that, to the election and, and what he believes about that. That is deep in his heart. I mean, I, I've talked to him personally about it. Many of us have. And over the years, you've heard him say repeatedly over and over the same refrain that he just felt like he was cheated in that election. And I think that's a core conviction of his. And when I say we should take him at his word on that, he believes it. Now, I don't know what comment you're talking about in this article, but I, but I know that he has been absolutely consistent from day one. And, and uh, he does 
does believe in the rule of law. I mean, look at what he did on the U.S. Supreme Court, for example. He's gave us great justices that are restoring the integrity of that institution, in my view. Um, he had, we had, a, of course, many judges throughout the system that he appointed, and that's the longest-lasting legacy of any Speaker, president. you're talking about the rule so of law. So he has a good record and, on and that. You're talking about the rule of law, and he's now been indicted, uh, you know, on, on 40 different yeah. uh, uh, charges. It's, it, there's such a juxtaposition be, be, behind the idea of rule of law and, and then things that he's done that may very well have broken the law. And I recognize Listen, I that there's elements there's... of it that may be yeah. political. I don't, I'm not even going to dismiss that, but I, I'll stipulate with you that there, there are elements that are probably true that are, that are political, but not all of them. Listen, I, I think this is motivated by political prosecutions, and, and we call it lawfare. That's what it is. It's just another way to go after a candidate. And what's happened to President Trump is unprecedented, unprecedented. And every time a new uh, indictment drops, it follows after some uh, favorable thing that he gets in the, in the poll or, or in the election or whatever. I mean, th th everybody can see this with their own two eyes. And I think the American people can evaluate that for what it is. You have these district attorneys and you have, uh, you know, the FBI and the DOJ that have been weaponized against their political enemies. I came off of the House Judiciary Committee. I served there. I've been in the hearings. I've questioned uh, Attorney General Garland and, and uh, Christopher Wray at the FBI. There's a lot of abuses that have been allowed, and we have to reform that. It's one of the things that Congress has to be involved in because we have oversight responsibility. So we're using the power of the purse here. We're using our oversight responsibility. We're, we're going to use every tool in our arsenal to make sure that we change the way Washington works and bring back people's faith in this institution because it's critically important to keep a constitutional republic.